All yeah. right, over here on the right side of the map, a member of the team, I am a very intelligent and very tall Zerg. He is known as... I am Misty. Lots of, of fans. fans. Yeah, there are a lot of fans <laughs> today. Zerg players seem to get most of the fans, man. Yeah, it's not fair. And of course, his opponent up here at the 12 o'clock position, our yellow Zerg, uh, Terran. Not he's, he's not Zerg. <laughs> he wishes he was Zerg for the fans. Well, Dad, here's the now. Her hair is ensnared in those braids. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she grabbed them like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have close air positions here on Metalopolis. Definitely going to play a big role in this one. Yeah, absolutely. And this Overlord has seen everything. He's actually hidden himself, though, from Ensnare, as the Observer is showing. Yeah. So Ensnare doesn't quite know yet. Well, now he knows. Now he knows. <laughs> so choice that a lot of Zerg players decide. It's like, do I save? Uh, do I make it so that he doesn't know where I am? Or do I really want to see if he's made a second barracks? They kind of have to make that choice. But good path on that Overlord by Nesty. is going to get it out of there as the Marine arrives. Well, getting into that position between the main and the natural is really good as well. You can use it to sack it later in case there's any kind of hidden tech. That's because the second one is also going to come through. Because yeah. in his close air position, he's got both sides covered now. This is something that a lot of non-Zerg players don't think about. Because it's just something they don't have to deal with. He's going to go for one barracks expand, by the way, which is the opposite of what I suggested we would see. <laughs> but it's very difficult to do that on this map. It also kind of surrenders map control early on to the Zerg player. Um, so that's a little bit unusual, I think. Anyway... Really, I want to talk about Overlords again because that's something that no other race really has. I mean, when you have observers on the map, you know, you have one or two and you kind of follow the army, you put them somewhere, and it's invisible so you don't really have to worry about it. Can you imagine what it's like if you had like 12 observers on the map in the mid-game and you had to put them everywhere, but they like if it's like losing a pylon if they die? That's pretty intense, man. If you're not a Zerg player, you got to think about stuff like that. You're like, well, playing Zerg's actually pretty hard. I don't even play Zerg, and I'm telling you guys, it's really hard. I try to play Zerg sometimes. It's yeah, kind of hard. Yeah, it's not pretty. I've seen that. <laughs> 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 of course we do. I'm going to see Nesty just doing what he does best, always getting the best information he can. He's got those links at the Watchtower. His overlord's in a perfect position there to see everything. And I think he's just going to sit this one link out the front of that base. Yep. He's going to say, come down. I want to see what you've got before you do anything. And he's not going to see a whole lot. He sees no add-on on the barracks, mm -hmm. and so most likely what he's, what he's thinking is it's probably going to be some sort of factory hidden somewhere. It's close air distance. He's probably not going to assume it's going to be a one barracks expand. He wasn't able to scout the gases, so it's kind of rough. And right off the bat, we see a second factory going down here, so he's going to be mecking behind this fast expand. Mech on this map was popular for a time. It is getting more popular, though, and I kind of like it. It's, it's really exciting to me. Well, it, it's going to change very, very often uh, in this matchup especially because there's so many little little nuances that people are figuring out. And it swings wildly each way. As soon as someone figures one thing out, they go swing to the other strategy because it's easier or more effective and then they come back and forth. And it's going to be like that for a long time because, of course, we've only had this game for about a year. Yeah. The, uh, the anniversary, actually, is coming up, man. It is. A big party. <laughs> uh, we, we should have a party. We I should. Alright, but yeah, like we were saying, Blue Flame Hellion is coming yep. out. Pretty standard. Um, little do you guys know, you see that little icon in the production tab? It's been changed in the PTR to actually reflect a blue flame. So, this this may be one of the last times you guys see the little red flame up icon up there. So, <laughs> remember it well. Now, Ensnare is trying to scout for this, but he's not quite close enough to see it. Yeah. It's very, because uh, I believe Nesty hasn't even hasn't seen that command center yet. He actually hasn't really seen anything. Right now, he's probably getting a little worried. But I like what he's doing anyway. He's getting that third base. He's putting his uh, spine crawl at the front of his natural, that Evo chamber as well to stop Hellions running up. So he's going to be prepared in any any situation. Yeah, he's playing pretty safe. That evolution chamber a little bit late, I think, if Spanchies had been the idea. Like if he had gone for some sort of super fast gas or something, yeah. it would have been kind of hard to deal with that. Um, but even so, you know, he's playing, he's reacting to what he's seen, he's playing pretty safe overall. Yeah. Taking that third base is somewhat of a risk, but he knows he can cancel that if he needs to. Well, it is almost finished, so it's going to be interesting. He does see these Marines move out, of course. Is this Ling going to see the Hellions? No, he's now wisely pulling them, the Hellions back. 
something out of vision range there for as long as possible. Yeah, and here they come. Really scary, man. He's actually forced the creep back a little bit. And Snare the has hidden these perfect. Hellions. Yeah, his timing is great. And Nessie is finding about these Hellions right now. Yeah. He does have a block here, but. And oh, he's trying to get through. Why is he not just going around the side yeah, into the drone line? Around. There we go, being reinforced by a couple of Marines. I'm really surprised he tried to go through there. There we go, the Queen on the ramp as well. The Hellions are in! They're oh in, my man. god, there's two bases there's full of drones! so many drones in here, and a lot of them being roasted, but Nesty, using these roaches very well, does hold back. The Hellions haven't killed that many drones, and most of them taken out here. Yeah, that was really surprising. The Sim City there inside Nesty's base really helped him. Because he had those roaches pop at the perfect time. Exactly. On top of that, the Hellions, when there was that moment where he just tried to go through the Sim City, yeah. it was a big mistake. He took so many extra hits then. Yeah, at the beginning when he went tried to go yeah. through that Queen, that was very interesting. That was a little weird. There we go. Um, so as far as Worker's Killed goes, he's got 8, which he would have ideally wanted to get like 20. Yeah. Um, with that kind of an investment. But when you're playing against someone who knows how to control, and if you get a little greedy, try to force your way up the ramp, it doesn't really work out that way. Um, I gotta say, Ensnare's timing was really good. He also hid the Hellions so well. Yeah. He made sure that Nessie couldn't see them coming until the last possible second. If he had just gone around, he would have gotten at least three times as many kills because he bought, he bought time for those roaches to come out. Yeah. And now he's just getting so many roaches moving across the map on the left-hand side here. I'm assuming to stay out of vision range. Yep, that's exactly why. He wants to control that watchtower before he sends him around the left side. I think he also just wanted to check for the gold as well and didn't want to go in the other direction. Um, right now, actually, Ensnare does control that watchtower, which is a little bit unusual. He's controlling it with one Marine. That doesn't normally happen. Yeah. Right now, Ensnare adding a barracks here, or adding reactors rather to these barracks. So he's got three barracks, two factories. He can start pumping out siege tanks. No armory just yet. He's just been going very tank heavy. With the uh, Marines, so it's, it's not going to be mech after all. It's a mech opener, but it looks like he's going to be switching into Marines. Yeah. Well, right now, Nesty's actually 30 supply up because he had that very quick third. I don't even think uh, Instant knows, knew about it for a very long time. Well, he he does now. now. He does have those two Hellions coming through. He would have seen it as soon as the creep came out because he had that patrolling SCV. Yeah. But he's extremely behind now because... Whoa, uh, hang on. Two Siege Tanks drop. With the roaches um, to greet them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about this one. I mean, no matter of micro with that drop ship is gonna make this work. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I actually don't understand that. I think I, I understand what he was trying to do. Maybe snipe a queen or something. Do some cool siege tank micro, but I actually have seen a video. It was a computer doing it, but yeah, yeah, dropping yeah. the tanks. Yeah, that, was that actually weird. wasn't even fair. I saw that. <laughs> <the YouTube man. laughs> But of course, now that Nesty is pretty much... Uh, what's his drone count at? Let's just have a look at that. Uh, well, he is at 77 drones. He's going to yeah. get supply blocked here. Um, he's actually at 126 over 110 because the Viking cleaned up some of his overlords. Mm -hmm. But even so... But he's um, going to have so much money now. Yeah, he's got Burrow on the way, Baneling Speed, Roach Speed, Aspire, five more drones, five more overlords. I mean, why not? Needs a few anyways. Well, come up from three the saturated bases. He, he doesn't have to do anything but make units now. And he has the choice of either maxing out and just throwing units at Ensnare, or he can just get a lot of upgrades and max out a little bit slower because he knows he's ahead. He's stopped down at both those drops. He's actually going another base down at a 6 o'clock position as well. And it just... Nesty just seems to be all over Ensnare here. He really is. And Snare sticking with those three barracks. He's adding an engineering bay, actually adding his first two engineering bays to get upgrades because right now... His bio has no upgrades whatsoever. Yeah. Um, he's still got those two factories pumping out siege tanks. No armory just yet. He's going to need that in the near future because that spire has finished up. Mutas are on the way. Mm -hmm. And it looks like what Nesty wants to do here is play that very Muta heavy style and control the map at the close air distances. Tanks unseized there for just a second, getting those up just in time. He has a lot of marauders in this mix to deal with the roaches. Of course, very helpful against the banelings as well. Yeah, if you can position those in the right spot, you can soak a lot of that Baneling damage, but with all these uh, Mutalists in the, in the way as well, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. He is down on Supply as uh -oh. well. Oh, Baneling Landmines! <laughs> is he going to move forward? He's going to use these Mutalists most likely to try to bait the Marines forward yeah. and then try to detonate them. That's a very common Zerg strategy. Not until recently, but now. Recently, oh, but not when a scan common. goes down right there. He must have seen them burrow or something. Well, yeah, he just wanted to kill the creep, and then he was like, well, yeah, bonus. <laughs> bonus banelings come with this scan. But now he'll be scanning a lot more that's than he's very seen true. it the first time. Uh, usually you see Terran players get caught off guard once and never again in the same game. Exactly. And uh, he dropped on top of this hatchery over here, but then just decided he didn't really want to do anything with that. Yeah. 
He's uh, actually bringing Muters over here. Yeah, I thought that was a little weird, but... There we go. Uh, now he's now he's realized that he's going to go <laughs> kill some of these drones. <laughs> they're both just kind of speechless so that we're like, well, these Marines are on break right now. They just annoy the Zerg a little bit. He has to send his whole army back, and they're just going to lift up and not really do anything. Yeah. He might use this opportunity to move forward with his main army, though. Yeah, he could, actually. That would be a great choice. And there we go. He's going to take advantage of this. Nesty's army is out of position. All these spine crawlers trying to be made, but these marauders got to make quick work of all this, canceling those spines instantly, moving forward, scanning again just in case there's more landmines. Lots of veilings here, though, and actually getting a surround on a lot of these marines at the front, moving back into the tank fire. But the muters coming in from the left. There's just too many. There's yeah, too many units. Uh, it's just way too many units. I mean, when you have twice the army of your opponent, yeah, it gets nasty. It doesn't matter what kind of units they are. Besides that, he's got better upgrades. I'm trying to find out the flyer upgrades, if he even has any of those. He does have plus one. Yeah, I figured those Mutas just doing so much damage. Yeah. They're not even normally a combat unit, but in this case, they're like, ah, I figured why not. Yeah. His Nesty's plan here was to actually just use the Mutas to make it so Ensnare could never leave his base, but then he just killed him with them. And uh, GG. Yeah, GG. And Snare playing decently, but Nesty just having him at every turn. Well, at these guys' level of play, that one mistake can cost you the game, and I really think it came back down to those Hellions, running against that queen. Yeah, when that you make that big kind game of an investment, changer. you have to be very careful of what you do. Yeah. Because he lost all the Hellions, too. Yeah. If he had not killed any drones, but then kept the Hellions to control the map, pick off Zerglings here and there, or harass the third base later on and just kept using those Hellions, that's one thing. But if you get only eight drone kills and when lose like eight Hellions, that's not a good investment. Well, there was also a, a couple of other factors into why he lost those Hellions as well. The SimCity there for Nest Team was perfect. He had to run all the way around. He couldn't actually chase those drones through because the Queen was there. He was mineral walking those away. And then he also had the Queen in there. The Roaches popped at, se at the same time as well. Uh, like I was saying, like if he didn't stop for that Queen, the Roaches wouldn't have been there. And he probably would have been able to chase them down and get a lot more. Because there was two saturated yeah. bases worth of units right there. Yeah. They were just all... Like, there were so many drones in there that you couldn't even see the creep underneath them. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Just running back and forth between the patches because everything's done. That's what I like about Nesty's play. He actually wasn't able to see the Hellions at all. Yeah. But he built the SimCity anyways. And he made Roaches, which was kind of coincidental. But even so, like, he had such Well, they were useful later anyway. He had Spines up as well and... He was ready. Mm. He played safe despite not knowing what was going on. That's one thing Ensnare did really well. Yeah. He actually was able to hide those Hellions super well, and there goes Nesty <laughs> walking by it, people giving him the beating the little, I don't know what those things are called, the little blown up. Oh, yes, yes. I don't know, what, what are those called? What would you call that? I know there's a name it's for it. It's the StarCraft it. things that you bang together. That's what they are, man. We should really know this kind of stuff. I don't know what they're called. I just <laughs> see them all the time. I've actually never used one before. Mm. We'll have to change that. We Yeah, we yeah. will. Actually, maybe we should bring them to the next cast. and just <laughs> after. No matter who wins, just get them up and start banging them together. Yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome. All right, but well done to Nest Teague. Taking <laughs> there they go again. <laughs> <laughs> see them? They're right over there. <laughs> um, yeah, but well done to Nest Teague, taking that to where we will advance to the round of eight. And I believe he plays the winner of this next match. I'm not entirely yes, uh, sure yeah. on that. It's Genius yeah. versus Coco, which is up next. And, and I uh, want to see Coco's ZVP again. Yeah. If anyone didn't see it, let's watch his uh, group stage play from Code S. It was pretty impressive. It's actually a really similar style to what we saw Seal do against yes. Oz in the Team League where FXO played against uh, Xenex. Or no, no, sorry, not Xenex. Hosea? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> sorry. Xenex played that same day. My yeah. brain doesn't work. But, uh... I think, uh, I mean, I wasn't sure, I, I just like, I thought we were about to jump into a break suddenly. You know how that sometimes happens where we're yeah. talking and it's like, oh, never mind, break. Yeah. I thought that was about to happen, but then no, I was no, like, oh, the we can actually go, talk the about this. The lights go weird when that happens. So. Sometimes, and sometimes yeah. they play this music and stuff. Yeah. That's... You guys probably know, you're like, yeah, I can actually tell when it's about to be a break. You usually <laughs> can. Yeah, they know before us. But anyway, the style that we've seen from Coca is very fast, like two base infestors to secure yeah. the third. That we can hold any timing pushes with that map control the infestors give them. The map is going to be Metalopolis first up, so a map that if you control the towers, you can see pushes coming, use those infestors as well, know when to make them. So we may see that style from him again uh, yeah. in the CVP. We'll have to find out. Yeah, but I believe we're going into a five-minute break. Yeah, we are really actually going to go into a five-minute break. And then I really want to talk a lot more about his game versus Alicia yeah. uh, in his style there. We will. That was very impressive to me. But of course, 
best of three between Genius and Koka. Genius Genius been around a long time. PVZ, not his best matchup. Yeah. He lost to Min, I believe it was, in the Super Tournament. Or maybe it was... Um, we'll find out when it comes up with this It was match. Revival or Min, I don't remember which one, but yeah. he kind of struggled a little bit mm. in that match. He lost to a lot of Mutas. The Mutas control of his opponents were really good. He does kind of struggle, I think, in those situations where he's playing against a Zerg player and he has to keep coming back to his base. Yeah. And he like does the base race thing, but he does it a little too late. He, um, I think he struggles a little bit with this matchup, based on what I've seen. Well, he has had quite a while, uh, just over a week, to prepare for it. So, doing nothing at the one matchup for a week, because this is the only thing he really has to play for right now. Uh, it's just DSL, there's nothing else for him. But of course, we're going into a five-minute break right now. We'll be back with Genius versus Coco.